Hello everybody. Today we are going to change the right front hub on my 2005 Jeep Wrangler. So if you guys want to follow along, I'll show you how it's done. Since we'll be working on the front axle, we will need to jack the vehicle up. So it's important to make sure the vehicle is in gear first if it's a manual and park if it's an automatic. And then make sure the emergency brake, the parking brake, is securely set. So the tools we'll need to do this job are a lug wrench with a three quarter inch socket in order to remove the five wheel lug nuts. After that we're going to need a larger either a breaker bar or we'll need a large torque wrench such as this in order to remove the hub nut which is on there pretty tight. You're going to need a socket set or at least a half inch socket. In addition you're going to need a large C-clamp. What the C-clamp is going to be used for, you'll see in a minute, is to depress the pistons, to compress the pistons into the brake caliper so you can get the brake pads and the caliper off of the rotor in order to remove the rotor to access the hub. If it's been a while or if it's recent and you live in the salt belt, you're going to need a hammer in order to remove the discs or rotors as they're called from the hubs because they have a tendency to rust on. Usually a couple whacks of the hammer they'll come right off. Last but not least, something you might have to go get or borrow from a friend or a neighbor is a large socket 36 millimeter size and that's what is used to remove the hub nut from the axle shaft itself. So before I jack the vehicle up, I want, I want to remember real quick to crack the brake fluid reservoir because as you compress the piston in the caliper, it's going to force the fluid back up through the lines and it's going to completely fill this. Now you don't want it to overflow because it wouldn't be good for your paint. So hopefully your fluid level is correct, so definitely check that. Looks like we're good. It's just towards the full and above the add. So there should be enough room left in that reservoir in order to compress that piston a small amount so that we can remove the, cal the uh, caliper from the brake rotor. So leave that loose. Now we'll jack the vehicle up. Make sure you get a jack stand in a good secure place so that it's safe, which is going to be underneath the axle tube right about there. Alright, so before we actually jack the axle up and get this tire off the ground, you need the traction of the tire on the ground in order to hold the tire in place while you remove the lug nuts. So let's get those at least loosened. So now that we've loosened the lug nuts, we're going to lift the axle up and put our jack stand underneath it. to go up too high, just high enough that you can get the jack stand underneath. I'm going to put it under my control arm since it looks like it got the jack just a little too close. There we go. Now I can lower that gently. Now I like to give things a good shake before I trust it, just to be extra safe and before I completely release the jack. Looks like that's good. So I'll let the jack down. And now the jack stand is supporting the full weight of that side of the vehicle. So now we can safely remove the tire and wheel assembly. where you won't lose them and you won't kick them across the garage. Easy to do. Alright, so we've got the tire and wheel off. Set that aside for now. Let's give you a quick lesson. We've got our upper ball joint, coil spring, bump stop, shock absorber. This is our brake line. This is the brake caliper. 
this works is those little pistons in there, when you step on the brakes, the fluid comes through the brake line, and since fluid can't compress, it pushes against the piston, which pushes the brake pads against the disc, or rotor as it's called, so your outer pad and your inner pad, and that is what causes you to stop. The friction of that, it turns into heat, so it takes the energy that was motion, turns it into heat, and by transferring that form of energy, it stops the vehicle. So you have our rotor here. These are what our lug nuts were on. Those are our studs. And we have our protective cap here with a cotter pin, which you should not reuse. And then this is actually the outside of the axle shaft. And underneath that is the hub nut that's on real tight to 175 foot-pounds. So we're going to remove this, and I'll show you how that looks. So now I'm going to compress this piston, and then remove the two bolts on the back, right here and right here. Then we can safely remove, and we're going to use a little piece of wire to hang that caliper off of the coil spring, because you don't want it to be supported by the brake fluid line. So take a large C-clamp, have to open that up a little more. You can see where that fits, not perfectly, but right there, and then you can just tighten it down. Once you feel resistance, you only need to tighten it down about another quarter inch from there. That'll be enough to compress that piston and get the remove the brake caliper. Once you've done it, you can loosen it back up and it, it'll stay loose. So now we take our half inch socket and remove our two caliper bolts. These aren't real tight, they only go to, I believe it's about 10 foot-pounds. Set them aside. Just comes back like that, and you can just feed that through any place that's convenient. And then I like to kind of set it on top of the ball joint there. Get this good and tight so it doesn't slide around. It's important that you keep your hands, in case they're greasy, off of the brake pads because you don't want to contaminate them with anything that might reduce the coefficient of friction and hurt your stopping performance. So we're just going to twist that to hold it in place. Right, so now we have a piece of wire holding our brake calipers out of the way. Now we can remove our rotor. Mine should come right off because I had these off recently to do an inspection when we decided the hub was going out. Just slide straight off, and again, try to keep your hands off of this surface, and this surface here, because that's where the pads, you can see the marking, depressed on the rotor to cause the friction to stop the car. Alright, now you can see, this is our hub flange, and this part right here, this bolt, this bolt, and this bolt, are what attach our hub to our steering knuckle, which is this assembly here. So in order to remove this, we're going to have to remove our hub nut, and then those three bolts. So to remove the hub nut, we first have to remove the cotter pin. A pair of needle nose pliers or a screwdriver in some combination usually make this fairly easy. Make sure you keep these in order. A little castellated nut and a spring washer. What that does is with the cotter pin inserted through the slots, it prevents the hub nut from backing out in case it got loose. It could get loose enough that it would cause quite the vibration, but it wouldn't come so loose that it would allow your axle shafts to move in a, in a way that might be unsafe. So now I need to remove that hub nut. Now, typically, unless you just put that on, which I did here because I did the inspection last week, you're going to need an impact gun to get that off. We're probably going to be okay with a good long torque wrench, and I'm going to use a pry bar wedged between the studs and the ground. should hold it in place while I put a lot of force on that, which should loosen that right up. this 
enough, there's going to be one washer, so we won't want to lose that. Take a small screwdriver, and the easiest way to get this out is push on the bottom, kind of rock it back and forth, and it usually pop right off. There's our pub nut washer. So now all we have left are to get the three bolts off of the back of the hub, and then we can remove the old hub and put the new one on. So back to our half inch socket. You need more leverage than that looks like. So we're going to use a medium sized torque wrench. Should have a long enough handle to apply enough torque to get that bolt loose. Inside of this is a U-joint, which I also replaced last week when I did the inspection on the hub. When I did the inspection on the hub, I noticed that it's starting to feel gritty. the hub to the steering knuckle, we can actually go ahead and remove the hub. So just get a firm grasp and just pull straight out. You may have to wobble it, you may even need to hit it with a hammer if it's rusty. Don't push too hard on the uh, outer axle shaft because it applies force to the inside and there's a seal inside of the front differential that you don't want to dislodge because it would cause it to leak differential fluid through your axle tube, and if you had a bad suit, you'd notice because it'd be running out the outside of the axle tube. So that's off. So here's our old hub, and I know you can't see it, but it catches in a few places. So here's a better view of what the outer axle shaft looks like. It's spline, and those splines match up to the inside of the hub, and that's what applies the force from your drive line to your hubs, which turn your wheels and your tires and put the power on the ground. Now before you install it, just take a quick moment, hold the outside of the hub in one hand and the inside in another, and twist. It should feel very fluid, the resistance should be linear and consistent. It shouldn't feel like it's catching on anything. It shouldn't feel like there's any dirt or grit inside. If it feels like anything besides smooth, return it and get a different one. This one feels good. So we're going to go ahead and install this now. So we're going to want to match the splines up. And you can just do this by feel. Gently turn it until you feel the splines mate, and then you press it in. Again, don't apply too much force. Once it's in place, oh, we missed something. The brake shield. The brake dust shield just keeps your rotors cleaner. There's going to be a little notch in the front. A little notch in the front right here, which makes room for your drag link tie rod end. 
goes there. You can see the marks from the old one. Works like a witness mark. So match up the splines gently. Alright, so try and line up the bolt holes as best as you can. And you should feel it pop into place. If you're not sure if it's in there correctly, it's probably not, so back it out and gently put it back in place. It does take some force, it's quite heavy, so be careful with that. But it's it's very obvious, it's a very positive feeling of engagement when you pop it into place. And you'll notice that there shouldn't be any significant gap around it, and what little gap there is will go away once we tighten it down. So first we take our three bolts and thread them through the back side. There's one. Bottom one there. Make sure it's aligned. And our top one. Always start these by hand. Even though it's steel and iron, you don't want to cross thread anything. Once those are hand tight, take your ratchet with a half inch socket, go ahead and tighten them down. We're going to get them snug first, and then we're going to use a torque wrench to tighten them up properly. We set these to 75 foot-pounds. So now we need to... down our hub bolt so first we put our washer on and then our hub bolt or our uh, yeah our hub bolt if I start turning the whole assembly that then it's time to lock it down so I'm gonna use my pry bar and a torque wrench now this is set to 175 foot pounds now that's important that we get it that tight Next, we have our spring washer. So try and align the cap over the spring washer in such a way that if you see the hole here, you can get a cotter pin through that side and out the other. So let's move this to better access. And that should clear. So you take your cotter pin and put it through. Once it's through, make sure you spread the cotter pin out so that it can't accidentally come loose. Just to be safe though, it's probably better practice to use a new cotter pin every time. Now we're going to put our brake rotor back on. If the inside has a lot of rust or scale, which this one doesn't, this is quite clean, then you're going to want to take a wire brush and remove that rust or scale before you put it back on. Just line up your hole holes, again keeping your hands off of the, the rotor surface, that way you don't contaminate it with grease. Let's put that back on. Once that's on, we need to put our brake caliper assembly back on with the brake pads. Make sure you get it in its original orientation. So you'll see these little notches in the bottom of the brake pads. Those go on that surface on the bottom. You may have to press the rotor in a little bit so that it's flush against the new hub that we just installed. Alright, now that that's on, we need to reinstall the brake caliper bolts that attach the brake caliper to the steering knuckle assembly. There are two bolts, and again, these go just over hand tight, about 10 foot-pounds. So if you, if you don't use a torque wrench, I would recommend using your non-dominant hand to tighten them. It's a little tricky to line up the bolt holes, so make sure that you apply 
pressure to the brake rotor so that that orientation is correct because these, the brake caliper and pads will reference the brake rotor in order to be perpendicular. So if that's on correctly. I find it easier to do the bottom bolt first then the top bolt. So then take your half inch socket with your non-dominant hand and tighten those where they're firm but not over tightened. All we have to do is remount our wheel, tighten down our lug nuts, and that's all. You have now successfully installed a new hub on your Jeep. Now this will apply to Jeep Wranglers, Jeep Grand Cherokees, Jeep Liberties, and Jeep Cherokees also. It's important for your final tightening of your lug nuts that you do it in a star pattern. You don't go around and make a star here, 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 and here. And I would make two rounds and make sure they're tight. And tighten those to 95 foot pounds and you're all done.